everyone and welcome to another episode of the knowledge show powered by knowledgecape my name is ahmed zaman and i will be moderating this session for you for everybody who is new to this program the knowledge show is designed as an initiative to bring perspectives of global leaders from different walks of life on matters related to business talent technology people and life in general the topic for today's discussion is leadership resilience and without further ado i would like to take this opportunity to introduce to you my guests first up is rajiv jairaman nolscape is the brain child of rajiv jairaman a man who likes to don many hats he is a theater artist a singer an engineer a doting father to his two children and chief executive officer at nolscape he founded nolscape at inciad and has nurtured it into a leading player in the field of talent transformation rajiv firmly believes in being a lifelong learner and keen on revolutionizing the modern workplace thank you rajiv for your time and being part of this show thank you amar really look forward to the show thank you okay. our special guest for today's show is sumati krishnan Sumati founded Stratford Training and Consultancy in 2003 and is currently serving as the principal consultant and director of Stratford Training. Sumati is also a certified coach specializing in executive coaching. Altogether she has 25 years of experience in training industry. In 2019 and 20 Sumati was in the list of 100 most inspirational LinkedIn icons in Malaysia you should follow. by the marketing in asia online magazine currently she is the secretary of the malaysian association of professional speakers thank you so much sumati for being part of this show thank you so much amar and um, i'm looking forward to having a chat with rajiv and here we move on to the more serious discussions i would like to play this rapid fire round with both of you and it's a would you rather segment and uh, i will i will go with rajiv first because he has experience uh, in in this section so rajiv uh, would you rather be the best performer but end on the losing side or a mediocre contributor to a winning side that's a really tough one i don't know how you come up with these questions um okay a couple of perspectives come to mind one is winning and losing are not final and they are not fixed uh right so maybe the, the the team that loses uh today will win tomorrow uh right if the the right process is followed but in any given situation i'd like to perform at my best and inspire others to do the same at the same time get inspired by others around me so i i think i will focus on my own ability what is in my control and perform at my best and what i would rather not do is be a freeloader uh in in a winning team not contributing that's a very interesting perspective rajiv has given there a fair warning to you sumati he is really good at this round so <laughs> <laughs> yeah so the second question for rajiv is would you rather have more time every day or earn more money every day um i think more time because ultimately if you think about it the the scarcest resource uh with all of us is time uniformly right although you, you can make more money more or less it's all relative but the one thing that's fixed for all of us is that 24 hours and i would love to remove that scarcity nice next one uh, rajiv as a leader what is more important for you results or reputation um results uh so when results happen consistently that leads to reputation right i wasn't expecting that <laughs> okay so the next one for you rajiv is would you rather lead a team of super sincere folks with basic talent or super talented but insincere folks okay so if i may replace uh, sincere you, you said right? Uh, right maybe maybe i'll replace that with maybe passionate or aligned folks uh, right uh, with basic so I, i would go with um, really passionate aligned folks with basic talent uh, i think they will any day over achieve uh, compared to misaligned people that are great individually 
uh, right? And and so and you know, Sumati and myself, we are on the the talent <coughs> transformation side. So basic talent is fine. We know how to transform it. But I think what's most important is passion, integrity, and sense of purpose. Oh. So sincerity, you you don't rate it that high, is it? I I just don't know how to um, think about sincerity. I I think being more passionate, being more uh, acting with integrity, I'm able to relate to those words. Nice. So last one for you, Raji. Uh, would you rather have all life events posted on social media or never be able to use social media again? <laughs> um i'm i'm really a private person uh, when i think about it so I, i would if i'm forced into taking a choice here uh, between the two i think i i'll be off social media which i've started doing with facebook and other other platforms nice thank you raji for those interesting sure. answer uh, i would come to you sumati next uh, so first one uh, would you rather be a sidekick in an oscar winning movie or a lead in a flop movie <laughs> <laughs> um interesting right lead in oh, of course we want to be you know in a successful movie so i don't mind being the sidekick uh you know it's it's um, yeah maybe in this sense i would rather be a sidekick in a in a successful movie yes right because oscars are huge right So it's not free. <laughs> you have to work hard. Yes. Okay, nice. Next one. Uh, would you rather have a world with hundred percent literacy or zero percent poverty? Zero percent poverty. Zero percent. Uh, I mean, this is tough. I would uh, ideally, I would like to have a balance. But if it comes to making a choice, then maybe zero poverty any time. Yeah, great answer. Nice. <clears throat> Next one. Ah, uh, would you rather be stranded on a deserted island or locked up in your own house with just access to food and internet? Um, I'm a low risk taker, so I'd rather be at home and locked up <laughs> with food. That's fine with me as long as I have my TV. That's fine. So not much of an adventure person, is it? No, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. Moving on to our next question, and it is: uh, Would you rather have to lead a team with incessantly talking people, or a team that never questions anything? Um. Okay, the second one never questions anything, but do they get the work done? Up to you. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the clause. Okay, I would go for the first one. Incessantly talking, but I just I, I'm also looking at the prof, uh, the productivity. I hope there is productivity, but I don't mind if they are chattering for a good cause. If they are discussing and all that, that's fine. Wow, yeah. brilliant response! I would say. Uh, last one for you in this segment, uh, Sumati. Uh, would you rather be most famous for no reason or most talented with no fame? Um, that's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I didn't get these questions. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, how, how come mine are tougher? Right? Okay. Um, most talented with no. most famous for no reason or no most reason. talented with no fame that the first one sounds a bit sad you know you're famous but that's for no reason right uh it's, it's sad but um, if i had to choose then i'd choose number 2 it's okay if i'm not recognized but i would rather have more talent right at least you'll be making more impact right <laughs> i suppose thank you all right thanks rajiv and sumati for a great uh, session by the way <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so uh, now we'll come back to the more serious discussion, uh, which is around leadership resilience. So, uh, first question uh, uh, would be to you, Sumati. Uh, why is resilience so important for leaders in today's context? And this you can speak both in terms of your own experience and experience uh, with developing other leaders. Why is resilience become so important suddenly? I think. over the past 2 to 2 and a half years we have you know come across a huge hurdle ever in our lifetime and um, what most businesses struggled was to overcome this and we saw leaders of various capabilities right trying to sustain their business trying to be resilient towards uh, the pandemic and build their business not build their business but keep it alive that was the biggest problem So more than ever, 
we needed resilience to sustain the business, right? Especially uh, during the pandemic. So I think there would be more hurdles to come after this. The, this was the huge one, but there will be more hurdles to come. But being resilient is so crucial to staying alive. In Malaysia, where I live, uh, many traditional businesses, many um, businesses with long history have uh, been forced to shut down. They have ceased operations because just because they could not sustain the business. And those who have persevered have, uh, are still in operations. So I think being resilient is very, very crucial, especially when we're going through um, tough times and uh, turbulent times, I would say. Rajiv, your, your take on that? I yeah, completely um, echo what Sumathi just mentioned. Uh, I think it's been unprecedented in many ways. We've not seen a pandemic of this scale uh, in our lifetime, uh, right? And so if you just look at it from various perspectives, one at a personal level, um, many of us have experienced loss right um, of, of health or family members so it's a, it's a very personal thing uh, right so th so that's point number one. Second, when you look at the working environment around us right there is a lot of setback that we face as well right with the great resignation going on a lot of flux in the talent market that's happening right now each day there is something unpredictable or uh, unprecedented that's going on. And then finally, at a business level as well, uh, just take today's context, right? Um, countries uh, facing the highest inflation ever, the US, uh, for example, in four decades, they've not seen this level of inflation. Um, and many other countries around the world, they are starting to experience this, right? As a result of that uh, and the ongoing war and, and pandemic in China resurfacing and all of that, supply chain disruption is going on, um, you know, currency impact is going on, uh, experts are saying, you know, a recession is just on the corner, right? So if you add all of this up, right, at various levels, at personal team or business level, or even at a macro uh, level, there's so much uncertainty. We, we often in conferences spoke about the VUCA world. I think it's sort of we, we experienced it. It's not an academic concept anymore. I think each one of us uh, today knows what VUCA stands for because we're going through it on a day-to-day -day basis. To me, I think the, the the perhaps the only way in which we will come out of this, and Adam Grant talks about uh, this experience of languishing, because everything is either stagnant or seems to be taking us back, right? There's no sense of progress happening, right? And so how do you overcome such a situation? I think a large part of it is, of course, personal. Each one of us has a responsibility um, in this today's context, but I think a lot of it is also leadership driven, right? How do we inspire people during tough times to stand up and do what is right? Uh, I think that calls for a different brand of leadership maybe. Uh, and that's why I think resilience is important. Um, and, and the first stage of course is to survive, stay alive, but is it even possible to thrive in this environment, right? And for that, I think we need some serious leadership. Thanks, Rajiv. Thank you, Sumati, for those uh, really interesting perspectives. Now, uh, since we've already explored why resilience has become so important, uh, for our viewers to break it down in terms of the attributes of a resilient leader, what, what do you think are those, Rajiv, first? Sure. I, I think resilience uh, is an inside-out process, according to me. Right? Inside-out because, firstly, we need to be self-aware. Right? How am I feeling about this? Right? And then the, the emotional regulation or control that is required in the face of stress. Uh, right? so, so there is an element of self-awareness. There is an element of emotional regulation or control so that we, we stay on track. Um, and then there is an outside-in process as well uh, in all of this. While I, I tend to put inside-out as a lot more important in this context, outside-in is important because sometimes the advice that you get is be optimistic. Right? But research shows that you know being optimistic uh, over time makes you disappointed. So there is an element of realism that's required. Many people say we need to be realistic optimists because if you don't have a good handle on the real circumstances outside, we may be delusional. Right? And so connecting with what's happening outside, being in touch with reality, uh, being honest about what is happening outside and hence what should I be doing now? I think that outside in is also uh, very crucial. 
and like Viktor Frank Frankl uh, famously said, right? If a person, I, I don't know the exact quote, but paraphrasing here, if a person has a great why, you can deal with any how, right? And that's all uh, talking about purpose, inspiration. If you're led by something higher, I think these setbacks and obstacles, we find a way to get over them, uh, right? And, and we have that positive mindset uh, and the willpower to deal with such things. So I, I guess I've spoken a lot now, but just to summarize bullet points, um, being self-aware, um, being situationally aware in terms of being realistic, uh, emotional control and coping mechanisms, all right? How do we cope with uh, situations and uh, finding that sense of purpose and finding our own inspiration to overcome these challenges. Right. Uh, thanks, Rajiv. Sumati, what in your view should be the key qualities or attributes of a resilient leader? To me, a resilient leader has to be someone, I mean, I echo um, um, exactly what Rajiv is saying, just to add on to a few more points, is to strike a balance between being empathetic towards the, the staff, the manpower, and also um, great, uh, what creating greater profit for the company, all right? Because you want to move ahead. But there are times when you have to strike a balance where you need to let go of staff or you need to understand where they are coming from in situations like that. Um, the pandemic, we, have, we are seeing, I suppose, at the tail end and things are picking up and uh, we need to see a balance, right? Um, as far as you try to understand, but you also need to steer the company uh, towards your uh, profits and goals. So there has to be a, ba a balance. Another important um, aspect of being a resilient leader is being persuasive and being um, good com at communication. I think this is very important um, because now you want to inspire your people, you want to um, motivate them and um, lead them to greater heights. Uh, and you know, especially after the, the two uh, years of going through turmoil, so you want to be able to persuade them and convince them and inspire them to build the company again. So I think that's very important as well. Thanks, Sumati. Very interesting thoughts there. Uh, I would like to bring the conversation to a phenomenon that the entire industry globally is facing, and it is a talent crisis, a great resignation, uh, as, as we call it, right? So I would like to know how resilience and leadership can help organizations overcome this uh, talent crisis. Rajiv, if you would want to take that first. Um, I, I had uh, an interesting conversation with uh, Nagin, one of our agile experts we work with. And he made an, a very interesting observation that uh, why is great resignation happening end of the day, right? One, people are feeling very disempowered uh, because the pandemic and other reasons, we all feel disempowered in a way because you're not able to uh, act in a way that you would want, um, right? And so that agency is somehow removed. But um, he was saying, imagine if, uh, at least in the workplace, people are given the opportunity to self-govern, have better ownership on the work they do, uh, right? Imagine, wouldn't they feel empowered, right? That's a problem today that COVID is making us uh, disempowered. This war in Ukraine is making us, external events are making us very disempowered. But if in the workplace, I find my safe haven, where at least there, I'm able to express myself fully through better ownership, uh, the, these agile processes and other things that we spoke about. That is perhaps one way um, uh, to, to bring some sense of normality to, to the way people work. Right. So, so that's one uh, aspect that I would like to call out here. Thanks, Rajiv. Uh, Sumati, your, your, your take on that? Um, I would say that... Um... In this, in this situation, in this climate, what we need to do is sometimes, I mean, in, my, in my opinion, sometimes like uh, finding the right fit for the right people and the right job description may not be there. And um, perhaps people should be allowed to do what they like to do. You know, I'll give you an example. Um, let, I have done training for people in, in front line and some of them don't like to be at the front line, but they seem to be good at their, you know, some aspects of their work, but somehow they don't have the people skill. So when these people are put at the front line, they don't quite enjoy what they're doing. Understand? So they should be given the liberty or the freedom to choose what they are best at. 
most of the time when we do interview um, people, we interview them based on what we think they they should do or what they where they should go. But I think after they join the organization, they also would feel um, kind of like misfitting in that particular division or department. Then they would, you know, it, this can uh, greatly affect their performance. And then as a good leader, you can see where they best fit or where they best go uh, to perform at their level best. So I think that should be, um, there should be a bit of liberty given for the employee to choose where he or she would perform at his best. And another issue I think would be um, maybe sometimes some organizations look for the perfect candidate, right? Which almost doesn't happen, I think. And uh, what they can do is get someone who's like almost perfect and you can always groom the person. You can always um, have mentoring programs, coaching programs and any other learning interventions and try to upskill that person, right? Because um, the talent, I believe, is there. Just that we need to be a little bit more um, lenient when we take in people. But of course, you want people with the right skills and attitude. Um, but there are some things that they can be nurtured in. And uh, especially when we talk about um, times like this, um, we need to understand like how they fit because they also are coming with a lot of uh, baggage and a lot of uh, emotional, uh, I would say emotional baggage. <clears throat> so we need to try to understand how they are and where they are coming from and try to help them to fit in the organization. Thanks, Simiti. Since you spoke about nurturing the talent, all of, all of those aspects, right? Uh, the next question uh, would pertain to how resilient organizations approach their leadership development process. The, the misfit that you were talking about. So how do they overcome that gap and develop leadership that can be resilient? As I look at it, um, what most companies are doing is, of course, they need to see their vision and their goals for the future, right? So everything starts from there. Where is the business needed to? And you try to nurture those uh, talents. Um, companies are expanding globally now. Um, and we need to get people who are adaptable, who are agile, who can fit in any organization, any climate, any environment. So that is number one. And another thing is people who are you know, willing to go the extra mile to meet the company's goals, targets, visions. So you need people who are agile and also easily adaptable and also easily um, can change to the climate. Right, like what um, Rajiv said earlier, we, this is a VUCA climate. We need to get people who are agile as well, right? So, and from there, you need to develop your your skills, um, the the talent skills, and see like where they are headed to. So that that I think um, um, an organization that has a clear set of um, ideas where they are heading are able to come up with a good development plan for their staff. Thanks, Simiti. Uh, Rajiv, your, your take on that? Yep. So I, I'll go back to what I said earlier about empowering people. I think the overall theme here in the context of whatever is happening around us from a leadership development perspective is firstly, give people the tools, techniques, the mindsets and the perspectives to become resilient at an individual level. And what are those things that I need to do as a leader for my, my immediate team, for the organization and so on? Right. Um, and today there are a lot of new things that we are doing, for example, leading in a, in a virtual or a hybrid world. For many of us, that's new. Uh, right. We're, we're not used to doing things uh, in this way. Uh, right. And think about innovating these through these small windows that, uh, that we interact uh, with the world. Uh, right. And how does it work over a long period of time? So there are many things that are um, relatively new for us to learn. Uh, right. And so how do we empower people? to deal with these unprecedented things, the unprecedented changes that we are seeing around us. I think leadership development today has to focus on the here and now because there are, and, and a leadership concepts from five years ago, 10 years ago, doesn't simply cut it because the context is so different, um, right? I, I would like to read out something that I found very interesting uh, online. This is from the American Academy of Pediatrics. Right. They, they talk about, um, I think, in, in the context of medical resilience, you know, health and well-being and all, all of that. But I found this to be equally uh, interesting for organizations as well. They talk about the seven C's to overcome uh, or to build uh, resilience. The first one is competence. And I found this very interesting because you cannot 
build resilience when you are going through that setback right because you are not in that frame of mind this almost has to be built as a capability much ahead of time right you need to start, sort of foresee that change is a constant and how do i build those skills in people so that's the first one competence second one is confidence that's a very different thing altogether i may be very competent i am skilled but when i face a situation like that right i'm not i, I don't have that inner confidence to deal with it so that that's a second c the third one is interesting as well connection right connection is you can't do all of this alone right the, with the with the world the weight of the world on your shoulder right how do i uh, connect with other people who may be going through something similar and i derive my strength from there i think a leader also plays a very important role in connecting people right so that nobody feels alone in this process there is a sense of belonging uh um, the fourth one is character and that, that's when i think your true metal what are you really made of uh comes through right uh contribution that's a very important thing i i found because um often times when these setbacks happen what is that one question we all ask why me why why is it happening to me right somehow we personalize these things but you look around millions and millions of people are going through the same thing uh, so can we turn this around by saying can i contribute it's not about me it is about what i can that changes your perspective altogether then you'll find many people who go through these setbacks at, at the end of that setback they say i i start a foundation for this cause right so they feel or they figure out that hey contribution is a better way to deal with this and coping mechanism these tips and tricks you know be it meditation or whatever it is uh, that that works at an individual level or a team level that's the the sixth c and finally the last c is control right uh, when these things happen sometimes we go out of control we don't know how to feel about these things we don't have a label for these things so we feel fuzzy inside so can we control the way we feel right so in terms of leadership development i found this to be a super framework like the seven c's can we build for uh, building resilience in the organization thanks rajiv thank you for sharing that framework with us i think it's great learning value for all of us as well thank you sumati and rajiv Uh, sure. for sharing those very interesting insights and information and i'm sure all our viewers will take away great learning value from uh, this discussion but before we close uh, this show this episode uh, we'll again uh, uh, go to a fun element uh, a favorite game of mine again so which is a first impression i believe rajiv and sumiti are interacting for the first time so this uh, the responses will be based on the first impression of each other so sumati i'll i'll go with you first uh, so uh, based on your your first impression of rajiv rank the following attributes in his personality smart innovative and dynamic you have to rank these three <laughs> okay and then i would be smart dynamic and innovative i'm not sure but yeah smart innovative dynamic yes in the same order nice nice rajiv uh based on your first impression of sumati uh you have to rank the following attributes in her personality passionate inspiring and creative passionate inspiring and creative okay so i would say uh inspiring uh passionate and creative i, I don't know her well i know her um you know passion for uh, music and dance and i think i'm sure she is creative but uh, you know in the absence of any personal experience i would just say from whatever interaction i've had i would say she i find her very inspiring i find her to be very passionate about her courses and i'm sure she is creative as well but i would some day i would love to see her perform and and then i would put that high on the list as well thank you thanks rajiv yes absolutely this is purely based on first impression so yeah we have that leeway <laughs> so thanks uh, sumati and rajiv for your time and being part of this show and hope you have a great day take care and bye thank, thank you so much amar and thank time. you sumati it was lovely chatting with you thank you so much thank you bye bye thank you so much everyone for watching this show and we will meet you in in the next uh, episode of the knowledge show powered by nolscape thank you so much mm-hmm.